Hello and welcome to this place on the internet where I talk about all the things I make, mostly knitting, little hiccup there. Um, and I'm happy that you're here uh, with me to uh, look at the things I have been working on. So uh, just let's get started. Um, I'm a little bit out of breath, I have been ill, so if I sound a little bit different then that's why. Um, first I start with what I'm wearing. I am wearing a knitwear today. I'm wearing, oh, <laughs> I'm wearing hand knit socks. <laughs> um, and I'm wearing this uh, shawl. I made this out of um, hand spun. I spun a gradient and I knitted it up. And it, this is the Boneyard shawl. I think it's called Boneyard by Stephen West and um, it's a free pattern so if you want to have a look at it then uh, go for it it's uh, a very easy triangular shaped shawl so if you uh, have never knit a triangular shawl before it's a great way to get started with that and it is just stuck on it with some garter ridges to give it some uh, shape and structure and texture and uh, it's one of my favorites because it's uh, so plain the gradient comes out very nice and I love wearing triangular shawls I love to cover up um, like this and yeah, it's just great oh and it has a garter ridge uh, border and the fun thing about this pattern is you can make it as big as you want so I aimed to use up all my uh, yarn in this shawl and um, I didn't have any leftovers I think and it's yeah you can make it as big as you want once you have the repeat you can continue it continue it endlessly so um, yeah that's what I'm wearing I've been working on some projects and there are some projects I haven't worked on that I have shown previous episodes so you won't see my contrast plus talk this um, time and uh, let's start with the things I do have to share I have a not completely finished object because I have to weave in some ends but for the knitting part it's done and it's my pinguono and because I used uh, so many different I used three three threads so that's a tongue twister um, three strands of yarn uh, held together and I um, yeah, once I dropped one yarn, I took another one, but I did not do that at the same point for all the threads I was holding. So yeah, you can see the inside. I have quite some ends to weave in, but that's fine. That's something nice in front of the telly. But that's something I have to do before uh, I can wear it, because some of the threads are peeking out. And I don't want that. So let's zoom out a bit so that you can see better. I made it, let's see, can I stand on this? I can sit on it so I can stand on it. So I knit it like just over my thumb. And um, yeah, so I'm very happy with the length. I knit a few more rows than the uh, pattern set. So three three quarter why do i have to say everything with three three quarter length sleeves maybe even half they're just below my elbow and i think that's uh fine when you're like doing stuff you know i normally put my sleeves up anyway so that saves some bulk right so yeah that's uh that's nice and you have this shawl collar and an eye cord binding all the way around like like these things i have to really um 
sew them in. Yeah, so I'm very happy with it. This is like the normal way to wear it and you can also put it on upside down. Then you have like the bottom edge is your front panel and you have your sleeves more to the side so more sloped and you see a bit of the um, let me see I have it and you see a bit more of the um, ridges uh, on your arms the only issue I have with this and let me get back on again is that it has a kind of a weird shape at your behind <laughs> like I don't know how I feel about this but I do, do love how the front looks and that it gives you a little bit more length and you can really wrap it around and so things to um, play with and experiment with so yeah that's my pinguono and as I said before I think I will make more and even maybe one in a more natural color team because this is of course very bright and sparkly no, not sparkly but very like in your face bright even though I think it's still quite okay because of the darker tones in there as well but yeah it's done so very happy with that and now I should start weaving in the ends. The only issue I have with this is not something in the pattern but it is um, like the yarn I used is very very nice and I notice it's way less than when I was knitting on it but it fuzzes so and maybe that's something that needs to wear off sometimes that can happen and it's not like too much now when it's done but when I was knitting it knit, when I was knitting it it was like everything my clothes were totally covered in fuzz so um, yeah maybe um, it needs a wash or something I did block it with the steaming iron that's my favorite way of blocking anything so um, yeah maybe it needs a wash to get rid of the fuzz but we will see that will come in time and sometimes it's just there are still the loose ends inside and sometimes it's just um, fuzz from knitting it and it will wear off um, in, a, in a few times of wearing it so yeah Let's put this one back on it's like not cold but also not quite warm it's something in between and I really put on my shawl and my sleeves like every 15 minutes I'm changing so <laughs> if that's what I'm doing in this video that's why it's not warm and it's not cold like it's warm for this time of the year but it's like not like yeah I just it's strange weather so let's continue I don't have any other finished things I do have something that has been languishing for quite a while uh, and I picked it up again and it's the sweater I'm knitting for my dad um, I really like the color it is from Holst and I'm lacking on the color name right now. Um, I will put it in the description below. So in the box below. Um, yeah, so the last time I showed it I was like... I already separated for the sleeves. I was knitting on the front first. And I think I was around here. So I finished the front, I did a very simple traditional neckline just by putting stitches on hold and uh, start knitting straight. That's how those sweaters um, were made in the past. So this is a 
fisherman sweater and a Dutch fisherman sweater so you have several kinds of like they have different fisherman sweaters in Scotland and England and they have in the Netherlands and then that they have in Scandinavia so in the Netherlands they were mostly black uh, black I'm sorry blue <laughs> they were mostly a color blue they were knitted very tightly and they were with some textured stitches so not like in Scandinavia with the uh, two strands of yarn so uh, you get the patterns by um, yeah, by using it and pearl stitches and some cables and stuff like that. So I finished the front and then I finished the back. And I did cables on the front and not in the back. Just I like that it framed like the front but I didn't think it needed it in the back. So I just didn't. <laughs> it's my choice so... <laughs> I can do whatever I want so yeah and I started to sleeve and I this is the only texture that will be in the sleeve so it's the same as uh, at the middle of the sweater over here a little bit more here then you can see better so that's the same uh, texture and now I'm going to knit the sleeve in stockinette stitch uh, decreasing and ending in a 2x2 two two rib just like the bottom edge and then I will have to knit another sleeve and I have the neckline to finish which will also be a 2x2 two two rib but maybe a little bit um, less high than the uh, edges on the bottom and on the sleeve so I'm very happy that I started this again I'm very happy that my um, stitch um, gauge is by the look of it still okay and the same so yeah it's very uh, tightly knit I use two strands of whole super soft together and I'm using a, let me see what size needle this is, a, I'm not wearing my glasses, 2.5 millimeter needle. So it's very tight and it still has the spinning oil in it so it's very um, stiff now. It will soften up a lot after I washed it. This is yarn you need to wash before you start wearing it. Um, yeah, so I'm very curious how it will uh, look and feel once that's done, but I really want to first uh, finish knitting it. And it's um, going to be very nice, I think. So that's something I started working on again. <coughs> Because I think this one um, has the highest priority of finishing. It's not a high priority like I don't have to finish it before a certain date or something. But, um, and I do get distracted with other things. But like I really want to finish this first before I start knitting on my own sweater that's still uh, on the needles so um, yeah I'm very happy that I started working on this again and let me see what I have else I have this one it can be very short with this one I worked on windy fields and let me see I'm not that far along <laughs> my stitch marker is here so I knitted maybe four six rows since last time and the main issue is that I was telling everybody over here like I remember the stitch repeat and I do know how to knit it and then I messed up and I was like halfway through a row and I was like I don't think I'm doing this right and it was like the second to last row of the repeat and this that one is a little different than the other rows and I didn't have my book with me and I couldn't find the photo on my phone of the pattern so uh, yeah I just put it away 
a little bit angry and um, abandon it for a bit and last night I um, went back in this last uh, row and fixed it just knitted back there was no not a big mistake or anything but I yeah I ripped out that row and now I'm back on track and I can look up that row I didn't remember and continue knitting on this because I think this was would be lovely weather to wear this although it's by far not finished <laughs> so uh, I won't be wearing it this autumn but yeah it uh, does make me like with this weather I'm like oh I want it to be finished so it does not motivate me to knit on it and while this was in the corner laying abandoned um, I needed another project for in my um, bag like when I'm at um, the swimming lessons of my kids or in a waiting room somewhere I do need some knitting so I needed a new project and I do know I have a few socks on the needles that I could just put in my purse but I just wanted to start something fresh sometimes you have that urge and I treated myself um, to a new custom and I'm quite far far already this is a sock it's just a um, stockinette uh, sock with a slip stitch heel that I put in a little bit um, wrong I miscounted my stitches I lost a stitch somewhere and I don't know where so I had to create a stitch somewhere and it's all fine but it's a little bit wonky but when it's on my feet I don't notice it so I'm not ripping that heel back um, and I'm using two yarns and I'm spiral knitting those um, I did do some spiral knitting I don't know for which project anymore I've done it before um, it's very easy you get very nice thin stripes without a um, like normally on the beginning of your round you have like those is that like stairs that the lines jump uh, so they're not aligned they are a little bit offset and um, when you do spiral knitting you avoid that you're literally knitting in a spiral so the rows are not straight but they're going upwards but because you only do one color of each yarn you don't see that it's a spiral so you only see that at the beginning let me see if I can show you that so over here you see that my uh, colored thread starts over here in this corner so that's the beginning of my spiral so that's where you see the jump but nowhere else on the beginning of the round you see the jump and nowhere on the entire sock you see it the only issue I have um, with spiral knitting is that you're because you're slipping stitches at your at the place where you change your color um, your row count isn't the same over the entirety of your sock or your project so it can be that you knitted 30 rows on the front and that you only knitted 36, uh, uh, 29 on the back or some way half way in your project like you knitted from your 60 stitches you knitted 40 stitches for 30 rows and 20 stitches for 29 rows like that's um, yeah that's the issue I have with it and that's a uh, bit of a problem once you start working this in something more shaped like a sweater or anything like that because you do want your increases to be on the right row or your decreases so that can be an issue 
but for a sock like this it's not a big problem I'm using Flotte Socke it's a German brand I yeah it's a German brand and it's um, the color does it have a name this color I don't think so but it's like a very dark gray a little bit heathered and I'm using this skein and I can't remember where the um, label went I did talk about this in a few episodes before this one about uh, how was it called I went to a knitting fair thing in Tilburg and um, yeah I bought this one there so if you go back a few episodes I will tell you what yarn it is I do know it's a wool cotton nylon blend with um, yeah and it's very very soft and I do like knitting it so it's not uh, normally with cotton I have the issue that there's not enough stretch in the yarn for me to knit it comfortably and to get the result I want but this is a little bit stretchy so I don't have that issue with this yarn and it's lovely to see the colors change and because I'm using 200 gram balls I do have a lot of yarn so I was thinking to maybe make these like I don't think um, knee highs will I will I don't think I have enough yarn for that but like higher socks and that means that I do need to increase at some point because of the extra space the sock needs when it's higher up your leg so um, yeah very happy with that and very easy on the go knitting so let's see I talked about that one then I have one project left to talk about and it is um, spoiler alert it's the West Knits Mystery Knits Along of 2023 and it's the Geo Gradient Show um, Clue 1 was out last week at the time of recording this it was out last week Thursday and um, I started um, the clue that same day somewhere and I was knitting it and even before it exploded I was like hmm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna knit it this way uh, that can happen sometimes and then the whole internet exploded with um, everything about the pattern you can if you haven't if you have missed it you can look it up but um, I needed to do something else for that um, pattern Stephen came with his own new clue one which uh, is um, spoiler spoiler if you don't want to know anything just say bye and see you next time because I'm gonna gonna spoil maybe some things so I'm gonna do it now so Stephen West uh, new version for clue one was a square bursting out from the middle and uh, striping your colors and I wanted to do it a little bit differently mainly because I really liked the fourth color on the border he had originally and I really wanted to end with my fourth color so I already <coughs> was calculating how many stripes I could fit in and things like that and I was like well I will just do the middle part different so I will have my border of uh, this is my square so I have my border of my four colors and there has to come something in the middle there and I just needed a diagonal shaped square diagonal shaped square a square knitted on the diagonal so um, it has this uh, lines there I picked up stitches around it and um, I'm at the right stitch count for the next clue which will come out 
tomorrow. I'm extremely happy with my color choices. I was a little bit worried that especially the um, Alpaca blend, uh, that's the orange, reddish, orange, warm rosa is the color called, um, uh, was uh, not knitting up. It's knit, not knitting up in the same way as the other yarns because it's a different yarn but a different fiber blend. I was a little bit worried that it was too much different, but now I finished the first piece. I'm extremely happy with how everything looks together. I have the smoothness of the silk blends, and then I have the normal wool, which is the dark green, and I have the fuzziness of the llama blend, and I couldn't be happier, so that's a win for certain. <clears throat> and now we have to wait for the next clue. If you want to knit a square like this, I do have made uh, my own instructions for this. It, um, I wrote it down for myself to um, <clears throat> be able to go back to it if I ever want to make another one. So I read it out completely. I used the same abbreviations, uh, abbrevi abbreviations as uh, Stephen West did, so it fits in the pattern perfectly. Um, and I r have written it out for myself. I don't feel comfortable sharing this PDF just somewhere free on the internet like... Um, here you go because the original pattern is his and his to sell um, but there are people communicating out oh, how you made this square how you made that square so if you're interested in making this square just contact me on Instagram or on Ravelry and I will gladly help you out but I will not put a PDF up there to just go to and um, grab it uh, unless um, I get permission for that but because I don't feel um, comfortable doing that without his explicit permission so if you want to make it this way just contact me and uh, I'm happy to help you and now I have to just wait one more day to see what we're going to do next I'm really not sure First I was like, I think it will be like on the, he will go like this and then there will be happening something here so it can go around but there are still live stitches here so I'm not sure what's going to happen there and then someone was like well maybe he will just incorporate this in a completely different shape and you never know with Stephen West so we will see. And I hope everybody um, is finally in a place that they're happy with what they're knitting. And um, yeah, just if you don't know what happened and everything, go and watch his um, explanation video on what happened. And um, I feel deeply for him. I um, think it's a lot of work that they are are uh, having now with with moderating and needing to record all the videos over and they they are buried in work I think so uh, nothing but respect for Stephen West and his team so let me see do I have any plans well um, <coughs> except for <coughs> Except for finishing some things I have on my needle and enjoying my M call, I do have um, one thing planned, like plants, not really planned. I knitted a um, hair hairband, like something to wear in your hair around your head, headband. It's not covering your ears, it's just in your hair to get... Yeah, so <laughs> I don't know the, the correct name. But I did knit that for a teacher of one of my children last year as a present because she was leaving. 
and I really liked it and since then I was like well I need to knit one for myself one day and I used the yarn I used for that um, I also used in my penguono so all those little balls were um, out in the open again and I finished my pinguono so I know what colors I have left over and I was like well maybe I will knit um, myself one it's really easy I it's really easy they are finished in a day and uh, yeah very nice so I was looking at my colors and I was like well I need to pick one to put in my hair I'm only not sure which color I want to do I really like this dark purple but I do never wear purple so I'm like is it dark enough that it's not like a really purple purple or do I just go for it or I don't know uh, I think this is too too white too bright I don't think that would be nice in my hair so I'm not sure yet. I really like this orange and I really like the yellow. But I don't know if those are colors I need to wear in my hair. I'm not sure yet. So that's something I'm thinking about. And I have something I need to fix. And I'm just so disappointed in it. Um, I knitted um, a dress for the summer on my knitting machine. And it's a very sparkly yarn I had left over from um, long ago. And I was like, well, I will knit a dress out of that. I do it on my knitting machine. It's not a yarn I really like to touch a lot to knit this by hand. And uh, it's not a yarn I would choose like right now but it's it is pretty and i wanted to use it so i knitted this dress and it's beautiful and nice and i wore it a lot at uh, uh last summer um it's very very nice but then i put it in a washing machine and for some reason um the yarn broke at several points and i was looking back are these points that I, there were not in the yarn or anything but they were not like all the stitch markers <laughs> are holding up uh yeah broken ends of yarn and stitches and stuff so especially this one is very bad so i really need to fix this but i don't want to <laughs> i want to because i want this um I want to be able to wear this like with uh, something over it and uh, leggings underneath it's still nice to wear but yeah then the holes need to be fixed and I was very very disappointed with how this yarn held up after just one one wash so yeah that's something that needs to happen um other things i don't think i have any big knitting plans for now but that can change any minute of course so um yeah we will see what i will have to show next time i think uh for sure the uh, stephen west m call i will be continuing i'm so in love with that project already I'm definitely going to knit on the blue sweater and the rest will be as it will be. We will see what happens and I will see you uh, next time. Bye bye!